Um, I'm kind of soft-spoken to start out with, but uh, I'm thrilled to be here, and I hope you can hear me. I selected a few poems, and um, I'm going to share about my favorite things. And um, so, if you will allow me, the first poem I have to read is uh, The Sweetest Kisses. I've learned the sweetest kisses come from flowers, touched with morning dew, ripe with midday sun, laced with evening cool, all creation enfolded in a ruffled flower head, dense with velvet petals that caress the face, brush cheek and lips, yield soft, silent fragrance, and give, only give. We've just entered fall. It's kind of early to be thinking of winter, but this next poem I call Winter Wealth. I lose myself in the bowl of soup as the broth swirls round and the spoon comes up and the steamy aroma rises, curling into my nostrils. Mmm, warmth. I melt away as the flavor spreads across my tongue, slides down my throat, and enters and fills my hungry void. The long simmered silk of dried split peas and celery rib, of yellow onion diced and squat orange carrot sliced, a little salt and spice, nothing simpler, nothing more sublime. Who is richer than the lucky person sitting before a pot of winter soup? strange, but one of my very favorite things is cod liver oil, and I take a <laughs> teaspoon of it every morning, and it really makes a difference, so this is an ode to the fish. <laughs> I call it the power of the fish. <clears throat> the power of the fish keeps me well, keeps me feeling, keeps me seeing, keeps me walking, makes my molecules sing. The power of the fish enters my mouth, enters my metabolism, enters my cell walls, enters my heart. The power of the fish strengthens me and becomes me. My membranes quiver with the wisdom of deep waters, with patterns of swift travel, with the know-how of the algae, children of sun and water. As I move, you move with me. Always you move within me. You carry me on waves of wellness and tides of thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Those of you who know me, <laughs> some of you know me better than others, know that I'm a sensible shoes kind of gal, so I've got these uh, uh, flat black shoes on, and sometimes I get ribbed <laughs> by friends about my footwear. So um, another favorite thing of mine is grandpa shoes. You laugh and say the shoes I wear are grandpa shoes, black canvas tops, tanned rubber bottoms, Costs about six dollars a pair when you can find them. Simple and streamlined, they move with the soles of my feet. If I have to wear shoes at all, I'll wear grandpa shoes. Even as you laugh and smile and roll your eyes again when you remind me that I wear grandpa shoes. You laugh because in Brooklyn, way back when, you and your brother Mo and your cousins used to laugh, call them grandpa shoes, as grandpa came stepping up the block. Little Jimmy the Gob, wizened, white-haired, a thousand years old, a spring in his step, grinning from ear to ear with his book in his back pocket as he ran the numbers all over your corner of Brooklyn. You'll laugh because you say women my age coddle their feet, paint their toenails, and flirt with a wiggle of their toes or a caress from the ball of their feet. Well, I don't know about that, and I don't run numbers either, but I'll have you know, I wore these shoes this summer, I moonlit on a merry-go-round, and I'll tell it to you straight up, they never let me down. Guess your grandpa and I have something in common. Black canvas tops, tan rubber bottoms, cost about six dollars a pair, move with the soles of your feet, grandpa shoes. <laughs> And here's a little trivia about me that's St. Paul related. I did moonlight on a merry-go-round. I was working for a Lao family over on the east side and teaching English, and then um, on the weekends and, and other shifts, I'd uh, go moonlight on Confession's Carousel. So that's a little bit about my background. Um, I have another one because I love grandpa's shoes and I love moon boots. You know the kind? They're kind of puffy and they're black and they're waterproof, and I like them too. So. 
little early in the season to be wearing them, but I'm thinking, oh, I like moon boots. Moon boots. Black, flat bottom, sensible shoes. Men's boots. Not pretty, you say? Well, I don't care, because these boots schlep me over ice shelves, float me free and dry on ice floes, keep my feet toasty at the bus stop at 40 below. And though I can't yet walk on water, I can walk with a spring in my step and a smile on my face right through the biggest, deepest puddles. Besides, Napoleon Dynamite wears them. <laughs> Got a couple more. This one is a longer one, so I'm going to put my other papers down so I don't drop any, drop anything. <laughs> okay. Here we go. This one I call Poem Factory. The bus is my poem factory. I get on, take a seat, plop my traveling bag up beside me unzip and take out my pencil and paper. Nobody knows what I'm doing. Nobody cares. I'm quiet and look like I'm minding my own business. My eyes, not on the road, are free to roam wherever they want within reason. And so I may look like my mind is vacant and my eyes kind of lost. But I'm watching and subtly studying this intersection. My mind, not on stressed up drivers or moving monster machines, ranges freely takes in raw material and pumps out prototypes in lines that seem to form themselves in the stale bus air as we wind over terrain both familiar and unfamiliar, stopping and starting again. I snatch a phrase of text from who knows where. It comes to me unforced. I jot it down, output from this moment in time and the gears of my mind. The boss and I become one as we move together, and I see that the gum-smacking, knuckle-cracking, paper-rattling, cell-phone-battling, baby-toting, political-button-voting, page-turning, gossip-burning, rocking-cocking, shopping-big-public is an essential part of the ride. Mm -hmm. The words and thoughts of others beat, bleat, compete, and complete my cycle of creation. I can't shut it out. And so I write any race, and read to myself, rewrite, re-erase, and re-read again until my sheet of plain white paper is full of marks and music. And I pause because I have to sharpen again. I've stolen time for this enterprise. I no longer car commute. The bus line is my lifeline to commuting and connection. I see the riches it is giving me, the long waits, the zigzag paths, the drawn out journeys, the chance encounters, the stand and ride stretches, they say, how can you do it? How can you stand it? What they don't know is that the bus is a poem factory. <laughs> and that's true. I'm, I'm always writing on the bus or the bus. So I'll close with this one. And um, another of my favorite things is the moon. And who doesn't love the moon? Um, I call this one another love song for the moon. We are smitten, Gaga, as she gyrates provocatively around again on her stark night stage, eclipsing tiny twinkly stars with her gorgeous full glowing face in slow certain ways, fulfilling ancient gravitational rights. She's one of a kind, a real class act. Her sensibility is global, cosmic. She boasts universal appeal. She casts coy looks as she tugs at waters within us and around us in silent, essential ways. She beguiles us as she lights long nights with a radiant smile, as she saunters us up the sidewalk watching, winks outside our windows, ponders her reflection, listens while we pray, makes lesser beings howl. We always feel her pull. She's always with us, though sometimes shy and hiding sometimes barely there, teasing us in faint white traces, whispering, hey you, just so you know, I am here. Where the big, round, broad, or wispy waif, wise or wily, high or low, pinkly lit or cool, smooth blue, yellow, gray, or blood red orange, she's a gal of many moods, of mystery, of myriad hues, always reliable, ever our muse, what would we do without her? <laughs>